Hello everyone and welcome to part three of our Lent series, Pray Lent. And today I'm in Gateshead. I'm standing underneath the Angel of the North, this amazing statue by Anthony Gormley. If you've never seen the Angel of the North, I want to encourage you to come up here and see it. As I said, it's in Gateshead. It is, according to its stats, the most looked at piece of art in the UK. And one of the reasons why that is, you might hear the traffic beside me. It's on the main thoroughfare of a road between York and Edinburgh, bypassing Newcastle. And it's also on the main train line between London and Edinburgh and then up to Aberdeen. So this statue, the Angel of the North, is seen by, they estimate, about 90,000 people every day, making it being seen by about 33 million people every year. As well, of course, people that come to visit it and people who just live here or who are just passing by. But the Angel of the North is an interesting, uh, not only just an interesting statue, but it's an interesting place to visit because over time, this area has become quite a sacred space. It's a place where the locals view as their own kind of sacred space or people travel here for certain situations. People have been known to propose to each other here. People come here in remembrance, put up placards in remembrance of people, or they come here to lament. There's a real sense of this piece of artwork being an angel that is guarding over people, or a place of compassion, a place of healing, a place of reconciliation. All of these things people have mapped out in their rituals of what it means to be human. This week we are thinking around art and prayer. And I had a conversation with my chum Carol Marples, who runs Soul Marks, who is going to share with us some of her thinking around art and prayer and how she uses art to help people to pray. Carol Marples. I work for Solmox, which is a small um, trust that was um, established in 2003 to enable the work that I do, which um, predominantly is on the intersection between art, worship and um, education. Uh, so I've done lots of workshops in lots of different places, places I couldn't have imagined doing things, um, as many of us find ourselves doing in this type of work. Um, but yeah, my background is an artist, so I come with that sort of 30 plus years of experience and working within worship and using art as prayer in various different places, offering it in um, workshops and conferences and online, strangely, in the last few years. <laughs> Listen, you've mentioned the word that you were doing art and prayer workshops. Mm -hmm. Does art help you to pray? Um, yes, well, I guess for me, the important thing and that particular week on Iona and a couple of sessions in the Ignatian spirituality teaching, um, I'd use, you know, I've been an artist, I've been using that, I've been to church and various things. But suddenly on this week, we were introduced um, in a way to using art and prayer um, by the lovely Joyce Shepherdton. Um, and it was something that bypassed the head. I remember going to draw in my head. I was going to use certain colours and draw a certain thing and something wouldn't let me. Um, something more truthful came out that was from the heart. And, uh, you know, um, and, and if I'm honest, it was a bit darker than I'd hoped. So I guess I was staying on the surface in what I thought I was going to do. And actually the space, I guess, a prayerful space, a safe space that had been um, created and just letting that go. And, and actually what came out for me through colour and mark making, no amazing drawing or anything, but just literally I went to pick up one colour and I knew it wasn't the right one. And there was something in the truth of the colours I was using and the shapes and the colours that came out that spoke to, to deeper to me. And I guess that happened a few times when I when I used that. 
Um, and I think in my 20 plus years of experience of, of using that, I know that's what happens for a lot of people, um, that it's a way, art is a way of bypassing the headspace that we, we um, I guess, censor lots of things um, and can be open. It's not that we can't, we can't still censor it when we're drawing or whatever we're doing, but for me, it, it's, it was a very powerful thing, which is also why I, when I create and um, I guess um, offer the workshops, it's important to create a safe space, a held space, because I know, um, I think we need that if we're going to, to let that honesty come through it, as in many other situations of, of where we offer spaces like that, but that safe space is important. Uh, and that prayerful space and holding the space, uh, if I'm leading, uh, and holding one another and yeah how we how we do it is important one it's uh, it's important to say it's not about being artistic um it's not about being able to draw or to paint it's about being open and it's it's just a freedom to to make marks on a paper um or to or to use color it might even be to rip the paper up um so hopefully in offering that there's a freeing sense, um, which is still, I know, even for me, hard to get over because we always want to create something that we put on the wall. This is not about something on the wall. It's about a process. Um, so, it, so it is a prayerful thing. It's about letting go of creating something good or whatever. It's just about going with, with what you feel and how you might do that. So I guess I have ways that I, I would lead in people to uh, on, a, on a taster session that I would do of inviting people to create marks of, of different emotions and, you know, realizing that we've done that quite easily uh, and colors, which was actually what was introduced to me on Iona that week with the lovely Joyce Sheverton. Uh, and so I use, I use exactly what I learned to do with her and what she introduced us about 25 years ago, just to, to free people up. Um, so yeah, just playing, thinking of emotion, um, you know, what's a line in 30 seconds that's happiness? What's one that's peace? And whatever you put down is right. There's no right or wrong for that, but we've expressed ourselves and you can do the same with color. And I'm aware that, you know, neurologically everyone is different and that might not work for some people. Um, but I think um, particularly in our very word-based still faith culture, um, you know, something like this offers something um, for everyone, I hope, but particularly for those who struggle more with the words. And I guess I've discovered um, more recently that I'm dyslexic, which might have something to do with the fact of the way that my brain works and what works for me. And that I struggled with words in the church. And I love words and I love the parts of the liturgy and other things. So it's not against that, but there's a there's a difference maybe of this, how this helps me. And I've used this in worship service as well, uh, or used um, using art. Um, and it's, it's just offering a different way of being in church, a different way of, of using and exploring and expressing um, our faith. Um, so, yeah, just being open to something new and whatever comes. And it might be quite messy in a good way. <laughs> so go with it. So friends, those of you who have been following this Lent series, you'll know that every week I give you a prayer challenge. Now, the invitation of a prayer challenge is really just to give it a go. If you haven't tried this way of praying before, um, the invitation is to give it a try, give it a go, see how that feels. So I asked Carol um, about art and prayer and how we might start um, praying with art especially if we um, might be remembering our school days <laughs> if you were told at school that you weren't very good at art and your art never got put on the walls and that um, you know you didn't know how to draw um, all of these um, all of these school memories may be staying with us in some kind of way and so I asked Carol, you know, if you're a bit anxious about picking up a pencil or a pen, how, how might we start to do that if we're remembering our conversations with our old art teachers who, who didn't affirm our gifts of art in some kind of way? So Carol invites us to think around praying um, with the 
biblical words, I have called you by your name. She's going to offer us some ways of um, praying and using art and thinking about our names at different times in our lives. She's going to be thinking around how we might use our fingerprints to just do some kind of, um, yeah, think fingerprints. Not necessarily with paint, but she talks about using soil. And on any of these kind of ways are introductions to how you might begin to just ex experience, experiment, give it a go um, using art and prayer. And on the blog site and on the resource sheet, I've, I've put down some other ideas of things that you might use. Um, drawing with some mandalas, I've put some mandala designs down, um, those kind of geometric shapes. Or even just, you know, putting the word God in the centre of a paper and thinking around people and places that you want to remember how we might use writing and colour to um, <coughs> to create something beautiful. Um, so lots of ideas. And of course, if you've got an iPad or an iPhone, any of these kind of smartphones, there are some um, apps and things that you might use um, to help you colour in or any of these things, a sense of creating a sense of stillness, thinking about what colour you use and what's that saying to you. Carol talks about, you know, how do we use a line to describe anger or a line to describe happiness? Any of these things and, and how we might pray around the word peace, especially in this current context that we find ourselves in. So lots of ideas for our prayer challenge today and the invitation for this week is to give it a go and enjoy. I encourage people, I think about, I use often Isaiah 43, I've called you by name, and just sit and reflect on that. And I invite people to even just begin by drawing their name, um, maybe at different points in their life, um, because um, not all of us, but most of us can write our name, or we can make a mark that, that is that. Uh, and, and that's something most of us are comfortable with. But if we think about maybe how we might have written our name as a child, or at a certain point in our life, which might be um, a positive point, a change, which for, for good or bad, I mean, all of those lead to something new anyway. Um, and draw it there and draw it now and sometimes invite people to, what would you love to draw your name as? What colours might you use? What shapes? You know, is that block letters or is it, is it tiny on the page? Is it huge on the page? Um, and that might lead to, you know, that beginning of the writing um, or drawing your name um, might lead to, you know, other marks coming in and actually just an abstract pattern. Uh, it's just a starting point. So I, I, I offer that often as a taster one, as a helpful way to go. Again, I think it is that non-verbal. And so, you know, even if you had a pile of papers or tissue paper and, you know, so sort of what colour is this? What, what am I feeling? And, and not everyone, that's the way I work and colour works really well for me. It doesn't work for everyone. But, you know, what, what does this or, or a psalm, you know, if you're reading a psalm, how might I express it? You know, if it says water, of course, potentially blue might be a, a word. It might not. Um, but or the anger, you know, what, what mark are you going to make if you're angry? And, you know, the psalms are full of anger. So, you know you know, for goodness sake, we probably need quite a lot of anger in our prayers at the moment. <laughs> and, and, you know, so what would we pray for peace? What colour might, I, you know, what's helpful? Um, is it helpful to, to make that? Might I just tear the paper up? But what if I'm just sticking these things down? What's happening? What's happening if I'm putting this colour? What if I lay this colour tissue paper over another colour? If that's just my starting point, where might it, might it work? Um, so yeah, I think just starting, and it might be reading. Yeah, it might be as they taking your name. It might be one word that you, that you're sitting with. Maybe it's about peace, and um, uh, maybe it's about ripping up magazines or finding words in there, painting over them, painting into them. Um, there, there are so many um, different ways, and just go with it because you know, go with where God's going, and just sit with that and see what unfolds. And if it's nothing's unfolding, sit with the blank page until something does, or sit with the blankness, the emptiness of prayer, or, or the openness of prayer of what might be there. The, the blank page is that pause, that full of possibility, which can scare us as well. It's a scary thing. So sometimes just scribble on it and make a mess. That's what I do. <laughs> get rid of the get rid of the scary bit. <laughs> 
then deal with it, take a rubber, <laughs> see what happens, color it in. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm looking here behind you at your fingerprint prints mm. of the and kind of slightly intrigued by what's that all about. That seems like quite a good starting point for me, something about, quite, I'm quite intrigued by the name Soul Marks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so two questions here, one about the soul marks, but I'm also interested in, you know, looking at your fingerprints and there's something about them that's uniquely us, isn't it? That, that sense of your fingerprint. Um, yeah, totally. Um, and these fingerprints were made with soil, um, so with the earth. And so um, there were ones that I've done before in other workshops. Um, but I, I put them up behind me because I was leading a workshop um, a week or so ago um, where I invited people to bring some mud. So you don't even need paint. You don't need any art materials. You know, if you've got um, a garden or even if you haven't, actually, I don't have a garden. So I pinched some from a friend's when I was around. <laughs> I don't think they'd mind. <laughs> Um, so like a yogurt pot full of soil and a bit of water and dip your finger in and make a fingerprint and these were inspired by Richard Long if you look at the artist Richard Long some beautiful pieces and he's painted huge walls and galleries with with his hands and mud from the river Avon and from the rivers in New York and a place um, around the world but we just need a little bit from our garden <laughs> is enough um, but I guess you know this was around um, a reflection of us connecting with the earth as well that we're not separate from the earth and 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 so I'd written a meditation and thinking about that but you can take that where you will and actually you know some of those that are made with long fingerprints they're also made um I encourage people to just think about their breath, almost to breathe in and to breathe out and actually to make each mark with your breath. So thinking of, of each breath as life um, and that this fingerprint, as you say, is unique. It's our body, um, the soil is the earth and we're connecting all of these things. And even don't go beyond that, you know, just think of, of the earth, our connection, you know, even the paper as wood or, you know, back of a cereal packet, whatever you've got handy, you don't need anything fancy, a bit of cardboard um, and just start to make those marks. And if you do that meditatively, see where that leads you, if it leads you anywhere. <laughs> <laughs>